I grew up in Roma, right in the middle of where lots of Queensland's coal seam gas is found. Friends of mine still live there. So I wasn't surprised that my name came up when Australia Pacific LNG wanted help explaining how they're developing natural gas from Queensland's coal seams. I agreed, but on one condition. We head back to where it's all happening so I could find out what's going on for myself. I found out about the process of hydraulic fracturing, how and why it's done, and what goes into fracking fluid. Follow my journey and find out for yourself. You know, fracking is frowned upon probably because people don't know a lot about it. You know, it was almost like a swear word. I heard plenty of things and you know, not all positive. Regularly there's a story in the, in the media that's always a negative about it. Once I found out what it was all about, it was totally different to what I thought it was. It's been used for about 60 years in the industry at large and it's been used in Australia for about 30 years. Fracking is actually a technique it pumps water down a casing and you use the water to create a fracture that improves the ability to extract gas from a coal reservoir. A lot of coals that we have in Queensland, they, they are naturally fractured, like the one you see here. Other coals actually are a less fractured and they have to be helped along a little bit and that's by the process of, of hydraulic fracturing. Not every well needs to be fracked. No, in, in the calcium gas industry, it's, uh, it's really 30 to 40% of wells have to be um, stimulated or fracture stimulated. So during the fracking operation, we uh, perforate that casing at the depth of the coals. And then under great pressure, we, we pump in a slurry of water and sand, and we um, put some additives into the water, and that actually opens little fractures into the steel casings. So you're pumping fluid into the ground, and I guess that's what people get concerned about. Does that contaminate the water? No. It, for two reasons. We designed the fracks such they can stay contained in the zone that we're actually targeting. Secondly, we really try to actually um, open the fracture and then introduce sand to keep it open. And uh, to do that effectively, we use a fluid of, uh, with a certain viscosity. And to achieve that viscosity, we, we um, put some additives into the water, but they're actually pretty common chemicals. And uh, my colleague, Peter Hoberg, will explain that process. So Peter, this liquid that everyone's afraid of, um, what's in it? The chemicals that we have here in front of us today, you know, I, I buy these all at the local supermarket or the health food store. Almost all of the chemicals we use in our daily life. We can use up to 16 ingredients, but today I'm going to make a frac fluid containing five. The majority is water, and it's around 99% water. So the next item we use is uh, potassium chloride. And we get this from the health food store. The next thing we use is uh, guar gum. And people use guar gum if they're wheat intolerant. We're gonna use about half a teaspoon, maybe just a little more. And this makes the frac fluid thick. We also use sand, because we need the sand in the well to do the job for us. So we have a borate substance. It's sold as a green cleaner, and it's gonna make it more viscous because it can push more easily through the formation and create those little one or two millimeter fractures, wide fractures that we're looking for. So we'll put a few drops in. That'll be eight. Very small amount. And we can see the sand is suspended in the frac fluid. Yeah. It's dry to touch. Yeah, it's like jelly. One of the other elements in a frac fluid is an enzyme because when we pump this into the well we don't want it to stay thick like this we want it to become thin again so it's just water and sand some of the chemicals will degrade down to just water over time and the others come out of the well the ingredients in the fluid why, why isn't that widely known by the public on the website you can see this list and it shows all the chemicals that we currently use in fracking in queensland all of them all of them we also tell the farmer before we frack what's going to be used, which chemicals are going to be used. And once we explain what's in the frack mix, I've not seen any negative comments. They understand very well. The process is simple and, and it doesn't actually, it doesn't harm the environment. So if you thought it was a bad thing, you wouldn't be doing it? That's correct. If I said to you that uh, monoethylene amine borate is a chemical we use, it's in your wife's lipstick, so every time she 
puts her lipstick on, she's actually using a frat chemical. I'll tell her that. <laughs> There's a lot of attention to detail with these experts. You know, I did ask some of them some questions that were probably not of a positive nature, but they were all very open about it and you know, they, they were all honest and I think that's, that's the key.